Taylor models 8756, 8752, and 8757 are a line of soft serve freezers designed to deliver consistent quality product at the desired thickness. Models 8756 and 8757 have two freezing cylinders, while the model 8752 has only one freezing cylinder. In all these models, mix is stored in the lower front refrigerated compartment and is pumped up to the freezing cylinder by an air mix pump. In this video, we will show procedures for operating and maintaining the model 8756 machine with a coaxial pump. For further instructions, refer to your operator's manual. We begin our instructions at the point where we enter the store in the morning and find the parts laid out to air dry from the previous night's brush cleaning. Assembly Make sure the control switch is in the off position. Failure to follow this instruction may result in electrocution or injury to fingers or hands from hazardous moving parts. When lubricating parts, use an approved food grade lubricant such as Taylor Lube. To install the drive shaft, lubricate the groove and shaft portion that comes in contact with the bearing on the beater drive shaft. Slide the seal over the shaft and groove until it snaps into place. Do not lubricate the hex end of the drive shaft. Fill the inside portion of the seal with a quarter inch more lubricant and evenly lubricate the end of the seal that fits onto the rear shell bearing. To ensure that mix does not leak out of the back of the freezing cylinder, the middle section of the boot seal should be convex or extend out from the seal. If the middle section of the boot seal is concave or extending into the middle of the seal, invert the seal. Install the drive shaft through the rear shell bearing in the freezing cylinder and engage the hex end firmly into the gearbox coupling. Be sure the drive shaft fits into the drive coupling without binding. Check the scraper blades for any nicks or signs of wear. If any nicks are present, replace both blades. If the blades are in good condition, install the scraper blade clips on the scraper blades. Place the rear scraper blade over the rear holding pin on the beater. Holding the rear blade on the beater, slide it into the freezing cylinder halfway. Install the front scraper blade over the front holding pin. Install the beater shoes. Slide the beater assembly the rest of the way into the freezing cylinder. Make sure the beater assembly is in position over the drive shaft. Turn the beater slightly to be certain that the beater is properly seated. When in position, the beater will not protrude beyond the front of the freezing cylinder. Repeat these procedures for the other side of the freezer. Place the large rubber gasket in the groove on the back side of the freezer door. Slide the white plastic front bearing over the baffle rod, making certain that the flanged end of the bearing is resting against the freezer door. Do not lubricate the gasket or front bearing. Slide the O-rings into the grooves on the prime plug. Apply an even coat of lubricant to the O-rings and shaft. Insert the prime plug into the hole at the top of the freezer door and push down. Install the freezer door. With the door seated on the freezer studs, install the hand screws. Tighten equally in a crisscross pattern to ensure the door is snug. On models 8756 and 8757, the short hand screws go on the bottom and the long hand screws go on the top. Slide the two O-rings into the grooves on the draw valve and lubricate. Lubricate the inside of the freezer door spout, top and bottom, and insert the draw valve from the bottom until the slot in the draw valve comes into view. Slide the O-ring into the groove on the pivot pin and lubricate. Slide the fork of the draw handle into the slot of the draw valve, starting from the right. Slide the long pivot pin through the right and middle draw handles. Secure the left draw handle with the short pivot pin. 
The draw handles can be adjusted for different flow rates. To increase the flow rate, turn the adjustment screw counterclockwise. To decrease the flow rate, turn the adjustment screw clockwise. Snap the design cap over the bottom of each door spout. Slide the rear drip pan into the hole in the side panel. Install the front drip tray and the splash shield beneath the door spouts. Air mix pump assembly. Slide the o-ring into the groove on the piston. Do not lubricate this o-ring. Slide the three check bands and three o-rings into the grooves on the liquid valve body. Do not lubricate the check bands or o-rings. Check bands have two smooth surfaces. A concave shape indicates an incorrect assembly. Turn the check band inside out to correctly expose the flat surface. Put a small amount of lubricant inside the piston and insert the liquid valve body into the piston. Apply a paper-thin film of lubricant to the lower inside diameter of the pump cylinder to a depth equivalent to the length of your index finger. Insert the assembled piston and liquid valve body into the pump cylinder and push upwards. The drive hole in the piston must be visible through the drive hole in the pump cylinder. Slide the o-ring into the groove on the mix inlet fitting and lubricate with Taylor Lube. Attach the spring and poppet to the end of the mix inlet fitting above the o-ring. The spring must be securely fastened and not allowed to float freely. Insert the mix inlet fitting into the hole in the base of the liquid valve body. Secure the pump parts in position by sliding the retaining pin through the cross holes located at the bottom of the pump cylinder. Attach the mix suction line to the barbed end of the mix inlet fitting. Attach the weighted end to one opening of the suction tube. Allow the weighted end to hang free. The suction line must fit tightly against the mix inlet fitting. Push both nuts back from the flare end and lightly lubricate the underside of the plastic flare. This will allow the nut to turn freely without twisting the tubing. Attach one end of the flare line to the threaded fitting on the lower side of the pump cylinder and allow the other end to hang free. Place the pump collar over the pump cylinder with the cross holes of the collar on top. Slide the pump collar upward into the grooves on the side of the faceplate and secure the air mix pump in place by slipping the retaining pin through the cross holes of the pump collar. Correct alignment of the air mix pump is extremely important. Severe and costly damage may occur if it is not properly aligned. Lubricate both sides of the pressure switch diaphragm. Place the diaphragm on the front face of the pressure switch housing. The lubricant will act as an adhesive to hold the diaphragm in place on the end of the pressure switch housing. Screw the pressure switch cap onto the pressure switch housing. Repeat these procedures for the other side of the freezer. Sanitizing. Prepare a pail of approved 100 ppm sanitizing solution. Use warm water and follow the manufacturer's specifications. Place the pail of sanitizing solution inside the mix cabinet. Brush clean the mix inlet tube with a long brush and sanitizing solution. Connect the free end of the flare line to the threaded fitting on the mix inlet tube. Attach the quick disconnect fitting of the pressure line to the other fitting on the mix inlet tube just above the flare line. Insert the free end of the suction line and pressure line into the pail of sanitizing solution. Place the power switch in the on position. Press the pump key. A light will come on indicating the air mix pump is operating. This action will cause the sanitizing solution to be pumped through the air mix pump and out through the pressure line. After approximately 15 seconds, press the pump key. The light will go out and the pump will stop operation. Drain and connect the free end of the pressure line to the pressure switch. Place an empty pail beneath the door spout and raise the prime plug. Press the wash and pump keys. 
The lights will come on, indicating the pump and beater motor are operating. When a steady stream of sanitizing solution is flowing from the prime plug hole in the bottom of the freezer door, press the pump key, stopping pump operation. Push down the prime plug and allow beater agitation for five minutes. After five minutes, open the prime plug. Press the pump key. Pull the draw handle down and draw off the remaining sanitizer. Once the sanitizer stops flowing from the door spout, close the draw valve. Press the pump and wash keys to stop operation. Disconnect the pressure line from the pressure switch. Drain the sanitizer and reconnect the line. On models 8756 and 8757, momentarily pull down the center draw handle to sanitize the center door spout. Repeat these procedures for the second freezing cylinder. Prepare a sink with an approved sanitizing solution. Take the mix tanks, the mix tank covers, the mix probes, the mix storage covers and the funnels to the sink and sanitize all these parts. Priming. Place the mix tank and the cover in the mix cabinet. Insert the prongs of the mix probe inside the mix tank and connect the mix probe in the socket receptacle. Place the free end of the suction line down in the mix tank. Install the funnel and fill the mix tank with fresh mix. Remove the funnel and install the mix storage cover. Close the mix cabinet door. Place an empty pail beneath the door spout and hold the draw valve open. With the prime plug still in the up position, press the pump key. This will allow the mix to be pumped through the freezing cylinder and force out any remaining sanitizer. When full strength mix is flowing from the door spout, close the draw valve. When a steady stream of mix is flowing from the prime plug hole in the bottom of the freezer door, press the pump key to stop operation. Once the stream of mix stops flowing from the prime plug hole, push down the prime plug. Rinse the prime plug hole area with water. Discard the mix and the sanitizer. Press the auto key. The mix ref light will come on indicating the mix refrigeration system is operating. The auto light will come on indicating the main refrigeration system is operating and the pump light will come on indicating the air mix pump will operate whenever mix is needed in the freezing cylinder. Repeat these procedures for the other side of the freezer. When the unit cycles off, the product will be at the correct viscosity. Closing Procedures To disassemble the machine, you will need the following items two cleaning and sanitizing pails, necessary brushes provided with the freezer, cleaner, and single service towels. Draining product from the freezing cylinder. Press the auto and mix ref keys to cancel freezer operation. Open the mix cabinet door and remove the mix storage covers, the mix probes, and the mix tank covers. Dispose of the mix from the mix tanks. Always follow local health codes when disposing of any unused product. Place the suction line in an empty pail in the mix cabinet. Place a pail beneath the door spout. Hold open the draw valve and press the wash and pump keys. Drain all the mix from the freezing cylinder. When all the product stops flowing from the door spout, close the draw valve and press the wash and pump keys to stop operation. Repeat these procedures for the second freezing cylinder. Rinsing. Fill the empty pail in the mix cabinet with two gallons, 7.6 liters, of cool, clean water. Place the free end of the suction line in the pail of water. Disconnect the pressure line from the pressure switch and place it in the pail of water. Press the pump key. This action will cause the rinse water to be pumped through the air mix pump 
and out through the pressure line. After approximately 15 seconds, press the pump key to stop operation. Drain and connect the free end of the pressure line to the pressure switch. Place an empty pail beneath the door spout. Raise the prime plug and press the wash and pump keys. When a steady stream of rinse water is flowing from the prime plug hole in the bottom of the freezer door, open the draw valve and drain all the rinse water. Once the rinse water stops flowing from the door spout, close the draw valve and press the wash and pump keys to stop operation. Disconnect the pressure line from the pressure switch. Drain the water and then reconnect the line. Repeat this procedure using clean warm water until the water being discharged is clear. Close the draw valve and press the wash and pump keys to stop operation. Repeat these procedures for the other side of the freezer. Place the power switch in the off position. Close the prime plug. Cleaning. Prepare a pail of approved 100 ppm cleaning solution. Place the pail of cleaning solution inside the mix cabinet and insert the suction line. Disconnect the pressure line from the pressure switch and place it in the pail of cleaning solution. Press the pump key. This action will cause the cleaning solution to be pumped through the air mix pump and out through the pressure line. After approximately 15 seconds, press the pump key to stop operation. Connect the free end of the pressure line to the pressure switch. Place an empty pail beneath the door spout, raise the prime plug, and press the wash and pump keys. When a steady stream of solution is flowing from the prime plug hole in the bottom of the freezer door, pull down the draw handle and draw off the remaining cleaning solution. Once the solution stops flowing from the door spout, close the draw valve and press the wash and pump keys to stop operation. Repeat these procedures for the other side of the freezer. Place the power switch in the off position before disassembling the machine. Close the prime plug. Disassembly. Be sure the power switch is in the off position to eliminate the chance of moving parts. Check to make sure no lights are lit on the control panel. Remove the hand screws, the freezer door, the beaters, and the drive shafts from the freezing cylinders and take them to the sink for cleaning. Unscrew the flare line from the mix inlet tube. Pull the retaining pin out of the pump collar and slide the collar down. Tilt the air mix pump away from the machine and take the entire assembly to the sink for further disassembly and brush cleaning. Disengage the pressure line from the pressure switch and the mix inlet tube. Remove the pressure switch cap from the mix cabinet and then remove the diaphragm from the cap. Repeat these procedures for the other side of the freezer. Remove the front drip tray and splash shield. Remove the rear drip pan from the side panel and take it to the sink for cleaning. If the rear drip pan is filled with an excessive amount of mix, refer to the troubleshooting guide in the operator's manual. Brush cleaning. Prepare a sink with an approved cleaning solution. Use warm water and follow the manufacturer's specifications. Remove the seals from the drive shafts. Remove the scraper blade clips from the scraper blades. Remove the gaskets, the front bearings, the pivot pins, the draw handles, the draw valves, the prime plugs, and the design caps from the freezer doors. Remove all O-rings. Remove the retaining pins, the mix inlet fittings, the liquid valve bodies, and the pistons from the pump cylinders. Remove all O-rings and check bands. 
brush clean all disassembled parts in the cleaning solution, making sure all lubricant and mix film is removed. Take particular care to brush clean the draw valve cores in the freezer door. Place all the cleaned parts on a clean dry surface to air dry overnight. Return to the freezer with a small amount of cleaning solution. With the black bristle brush, brush clean the rear shell bearings at the back of the freezing cylinders. Using the long flexible brush and the cleaning solution, clean the mix inlet tubes located in the mix cabinet. Thoroughly clean the tubes all the way up to the freezing cylinder. This area needs special attention because bacteria and milkstone can build up here. Wipe clean all exterior surfaces of the freezer and the mix cabinet. This completes procedures for assembly, disassembly, and maintenance for the model 8756 machine with a coaxial pump. We at Taylor Company thank you for watching this video.